I'm not going to say that I feel hot in the month of November, the very last day to be exact. But I feel kind of, we almost sweated over here, but you know, we're going to do this anyways. Let's put some, okay, that one does not want to fit there. Does that? Mm -mm, okay. Anyways, yeah, I think I'll do it like, should I? This is, okay. Merry Christmas. Yes, insert the sparkles and the claps here. If I have sparkles, who knows really? Okay. Today, I will be reading a story for you called Amy Winetown's Joyful Christmas. There will be two plot twists, one with the story and something else, but hopefully you'll be able to figure it out before I say anything. But one plot twist I could tell you right now is the fact that this is the last day of November, I guess. But the other one, you have to figure that out yourself. Let's get right into the story. Okay, put that there and go. Hello, my name is Jalian. Let's get right in today's story. Amy Winetown's Joyful Christmas. Today really is not the day for that. Come on, stop it. My mom, Jill, and my dad, Marvin, never understood Christmas. Mostly my dad, actually. They felt like it was just a time of year to waste money on gifts for people who didn't get them something just as nice. Also known as gift exchange, we all know how that goes. Singing annoying Christmas songs in front of random people's front door, talking about a fat man who could pass away any second while trying to go down a chimney, useless Christmas decorations, unnecessary Christmas trees, and let's not get started on that gingerbread house nonsense, as they called it. As you can see, they aren't really lovers of Christmas, especially my dad. But this year, I wanted to turn things around. I'm getting way too ahead of myself. Let's start with who I am. My name is Amy and I'm nine years old. I have two siblings, Gina, she's 12, and Michael, he's 13. That's the backstory, now I can continue. Our parents have never let us have a good Christmas, let alone a bad one. It just doesn't exist in our home. My dad gets so mad every time November is about to end. Today is the last day of November, but yeah, this this story, I guess it ties in. We all try our best not to say words like jolly, merry, Christmas, ho, 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 and all of the Christmas terms that you could think of. My siblings and I just act like it's another Halloween, just to avoid saying something joyful to fit the season because, you know, tis the season for dad to be angry for no reason. The neighbors won't invite us to things. The only people who are nice to us are Mr. Charles and his wife, Mia. As for the rest, they just gossip about how terrible our parents are and how sad we must feel. We aren't sad. We are upset that our parents act weird about a holiday that's linked to our religion. Yes, we are all Christians, but my dad's hatred for Christmas always makes Christians nearby feel like he's an undercover atheist but whatever this isn't about them my siblings and i decided that we had to find a way to secretly call our uncle mark he's dad's brother by the way he loves christmas if there's anyone that can help us change dad's heart it's uncle mark we never thought of this type of plan before my siblings and I would just try to beg mom and dad for gifts in late November so they wouldn't suspect it was to hold on to for Christmas. We now have an opportunity to try and change this. I took mom's cell phone from her room while she was in the shower. I ran to the room that I shared with my sister Gina while she was watching TV downstairs. I then loudly whispered, Gina, Gina, get up here. She jumped off the couch and ran upstairs. Michael was keeping dad busy outside. They were talking about gross guy stuff like fishing and hunting animals. Anyways, Gina came in and said, 
we don't have much time mom won't be bathing forever let's do this I looked at my sister Gina and said, you are three years older than me and usually make all phone calls if Michael isn't around, but I want to make this one. She looked shocked, but nodded in approval. Uncle Mark was usually very busy. He is a freelancer who takes short breaks in November and December, but works throughout the other 10 months. It's usually very hard to get a hold of him, but I had to try. I then dialed his number and he answered in two rings. Hello, this is Mark Winetown. How may I he- I cut him off and said, Uncle Mark, it's me, Amy. We need your help. He then said, what may I do for you? I explained everything and he agreed to help us without even hesitating. The last thing he said before he hung up was, I want my twin brother to love Christmas like he used to back when we were kids, and I am willing to give it a shot. I'll see you seven days before Christmas. Right at that moment, we heard the water stop and mom hopped out the shower and started singing her time to dry off song. I quickly said bye to Uncle Mark, then Gina grabbed the phone and ran to mom's room and placed it back just in time. We both know where she leaves her phone so she'd never know we used it. Even though mom and dad share a room, we still just call it mom's room because there's pink everywhere, but dad wasn't bothered by this at all. We live in a five bedroom home with two and a half baths. If dad ever had an issue, he would just go downstairs and sleep. But around this time of year, mom always kicks him out of her room. I wonder why. With that aside, Uncle Mark knows not to call our mom and ask her about what Christmas gifts to get us. So we told him to call and ask to speak to us about our grades and give us tips to pass tests at school. We had to make this as realistic as possible. No plan is more perfect than this one. I high-fived Gina, and shortly after, Michael came out and shouted loudly, Gina, Amy, let's play this board game. We both laughed. He said it so awkwardly, but we played along. Gina and I said, sure, loudly. He then sat on our bedroom floor and said loudly, let's let Amy go first. Then I whispered, Uncle Mark said he'd help. Just act natural. Then he shouted, Uncle Mark said what? Gina and I both covered his mouth, then told him to hush. Gina then said, the whole neighborhood probably knows by now thanks to Michael. Michael and I both laughed and we both said, it's your turn, Gina. We played for a bit while laughing, whispering and loudly stating that it was someone else's turn. I felt like we were already in the spirit of Christmas already. It's now eight days before Christmas. Gina has been secretly counting the days. Just like how she's been counting the amount of days that mom kicked dad out of her room in the last few days. It's been a mess, but life goes on. My siblings and I gathered near the TV this time. Dad was at work and mom was taking a nap. Mom's a part-time online assistant that makes more money than dad, but let's not talk about that. Work smarter, not harder, I guess. We called Uncle Mark while mom was asleep and he said that everything was ready for our plan. He bought a white beard, gifts for everyone, and a Santa-like costume with a twist. He told us that he'd be staying by our neighbor, Mr. Charles, and his wife, Mia, who lived two minutes up the road. We knew he couldn't just get all of that stuff and show up on our doorstep like a lost puppy. It would seem too suspicious, but what Uncle Mark decided to do wasn't suspicious at all to me. The plan was in motion and we were all excited. Now to wait for the big day. It was now one day before Christmas. He called us. We went over the plan again just to make sure things went by smoothly. Now we wait. It's now the 25th of December, 7 a.m. to be exact. Mom and dad were both up and so was I. My siblings were still asleep. I wanted to help mom with breakfast so I made sure to wake up early. Dad was sitting in his big dark gray winter sweater, black warm pants, and black and light gray bedroom slippers. He looked so cozy and relaxed. I hoped that he would stay this way for the rest of December. But we all can't get what we want. 
My mom and I placed the delicious food around the table and then she asked if my siblings would be okay waking up this early. I nodded then said, nobody likes waking up before nine in this house, but they'll be okay. Then I ran upstairs to wake Gina. We then both ran downstairs to wake Michael. He's a heavy sleeper, but we managed to wake him up after 10 seconds of tickles. We all gathered around the table and started to eat. The food was amazing. Waking up to help mom was worth it. Halfway through my meal, we all heard a knock at the door. It was Mr. Charles. His wife, Miss Mia, was having a stroke and his car decided not to work properly on this day of all days. My dad, mom, and all of us dashed out of the house. My dad started his car without a word and drove right up to Mr. Charles's driveway. Then he shouted, let's get her to the hospital. Charles ran to our dad's car and said, what about the kids? We all can't fit in this car. What do we do? Mr. Charles and Mia had two daughters, Erica and Eva. They were both nine years old like me. My dad had three kids and there were four adults. Nine people couldn't fit in a car that holds only five people. Mr. Charles began to think. Then he ran to his garage, opened it, then started up his white bus. He then said, I was so worried that I forgot I had this bus that worked. My dad jumped out of his car and told Mr. Charles, I'll drive. Mr. Charles didn't even disagree. Our Christmas was ruined. But at least Mr. Charles' wife, Mia, will be okay. We all got to the hospital and Mr. Charles told my dad, I'll take it from here. Please stay with your family and my daughters. I'll call you if anything bad happens. Mia didn't really look like she had a stroke, but what would I know? I can't even spell stroke. But that's besides the point. They went in and stayed for some time. We stayed warm and toasty in the bus. Mom and dad were stressed out while all of the kids and I were playing with cars that were found in Mr. Charles's bus. I looked at dad and mom and dad said, should I go in? Then mom said, it has been 16 minutes. Let's just wait patiently. They'll be out soon. I have never seen my dad like this. His phone rang and he answered it on the first ring and said, Charles, is your wife okay? Then we all heard my dad say, okay, we'll wait for you. Then he said goodbye and hung up. It had now been 38 minutes and we were all getting bored in the bus. We kids, that is. Dad still looked stressed, but mom looked calmer by the minute. They came out 17 minutes later. Mia looked even better than before. My dad jumped out of the bus and quickly asked, what did the doctor say? Are you okay, Miss Mia? Mia looked at my dad and said, the doctor said it was nothing to worry about. He said I could stay the night or go home. I decided to go back home. My dad looked so relieved. He smiled then said thank god you're okay let's head back to my house my wife will give you something delicious to eat dad looked at my mom and smiled she smiled back and said i got out of the bus just to hear this she can eat with us anytime then mom smiled and they all got into the bus my dad drove us back to his house he then ran up to the door to open it but it looks like nobody locked the door Dad pushed the door slowly while we were behind him. He said, someone may be in our house. Then he continued to open the door. And if you saw what he saw, you'd be shocked. All the Christmas decorations from all shops in the world looked like they were dropped off in our living room. Dad's mouth dropped. Then he turned around and said, this must be the wrong house. He looked at the number of the door and realized that this was our house. Mr. Charles pushed him forward and we all went in. It was magical. We had a tree and there were gifts underneath the tree. There was Christmas decor everywhere. Then dad said, they could have just stole everything. Why'd they leave this stuff here? Everyone laughed. Then Uncle Mark popped out from behind our couch. He was in his Santa costume and dad panicked. He looked like he was going to hit Santa. Then Uncle Mark removed the beard and said, it's me, it's me. Then he put his fist down and calmed down. My dad looked at him and said, Mark, why are you here? What's all this stuff? Mia just got a stroke. Uncle Mark cut him off and said, it was all planned. Charles and Mia agreed to help me. 
My dad looked at him, then looked at Mr. Charles and Mia. He laughed until he cried. We were all shocked by his behavior. I was confused but still said, Dad, are you okay? He sat down. Mom got him a box of tissues and Gina got him water. I sat next to him and said, Is there something you want to tell us, Dad? He blew his nose, drank some water, cleared his throat, and then he began speaking. When I was 13 years old, my best friend passed away on Christmas Day. He caught a massive stroke and I couldn't save him. Instead of praying to God, I asked Santa to save my friend, but he didn't. The only gift I wanted was for my best friend Ryan to survive and have good health. I felt like good health could come in the form of a gift from Santa when I was 13. He started crying some more then said, from that day I hated Christmas, Christmas carols, and most of all I hated Santa. I felt like he took my friend away from me and I vowed to never be happy around this time of year. I hugged my dad and everyone else joined in on the hug, then told him, you don't have to feel that way anymore. Your friend Ryan would want you to be happy and move on, Dad. It's time. He then hugged me tightly and everyone else faded out from the hug slowly. He then said, We might as well have a holly jolly Christmas. Dad never uses words like this. We were all shocked, but kind of relieved. Everyone smiled and this is just what we decided to do. We enjoyed every bit of it. And that is today's story. Please tell me if you thought it would end like this, if you thought that the plot twist would be this. And um, yeah, we all know I said the first plot twist was, it was created on November the 30th. The second plot twist is the ending, but I need to give you a third plot twist. That is not a part of that, that's not a part of it okay the third plot twist is that i am the creator of this story because i went online could not find one and i was like you know what i'll create a story myself so tell me how i did down below if you made it this far please subscribe if you need more time here are two videos for you to check out no pressure and with that said don't be too problematic be as polite as possible. I'll ho ho hold you next time. Bye.